Hello, it's Patrick here from thegaragebandguide.com. In this video, we're going to look at GarageBand's amp designer. What is it? How does it work? And how can you use it to make your guitars sound awesome? If you want to dive right in and test how some of these amps sound straight away, GarageBand has a project template called Amp Collection that will load up a selection of available amps for you to play with. You can also select the record guitar or bass audio track when adding a new track to any project. Now there are loads of presets available in GarageBand's library pane, ranging from clean and simple to face meltingly filthy. If you're looking for a particular guitar tone, using one of these presets is a great starting point. Now to access the amp designer itself, you'll need to open the smart controls window. You'll see there are some smart controls available here, I'll come back to these in a sec. For now, click on the small amplifier icon in the top right corner of the smart controls window to open the amp designer. The display here will vary depending on which amp you've selected. I'll stick with the British combo for now. Up at the top left of the amp designer window, you'll find even more presets are available if you need them. So the gain knob here obviously controls the amount of gain applied. Now it's linked to the gain control in the smart controls window, so you'll have the same gain level in both. Your EQ controls here are the standard bass, mid and treble you'll find on most amplifiers, though you can change the characteristics of these EQ controls by selecting from the list that appears when you click on EQ above the knobs there. Next, there's a reverb on-off toggle switch and a level dial, which again corresponds to the reverb dial in the smart controls window beneath. You can also select from different types of reverb here. You then have some effects controls. Now these will vary depending on the amp model you've selected. Here, it's a choice between a tremolo and a vibe, and you have a depth and rate control here, as well as the option to sync the rate to the BPM of your project. 
there's a master volume control here as well. It is worth noting that the master control doesn't affect the volume of your track, meaning you can simulate pushing the amp to its limit without deafening anyone or drowning out the other tracks in your project. The output slider down at the bottom right hand corner of the amp designer window dictates the overall output level of the amp designer. Down here is where you can really fine tune your amp. The model menu allows you to select from over two dozen amp combos from unofficial approximations of Fender and Marshall amps to Orange and Mesa Boogie There's something here for most every genre you can imagine. Now you can even customise things further by choosing a specific amp head and cabinet combo separately. And over here, you can select what type of microphone you'd like GarageBand to emulate. From the good old SM57 to the Roger R121. You can even adjust the mic's virtual placement in relation to your chosen cabinets, speakers. Very cool. And there you have it. That's everything you need to get to grips with GarageBand's Amp Designer. If you like this video, then leave a like. It really does help and I really do appreciate it. Subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you come and check out the garagebandguide.com for more great GarageBand tutorials. Bye for now.